<laughs> Gibby, what do you got for us? You could let's just let's be clear about this. <laughs> you lost a two thousand dollars. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Gus and Gorney. Uh, big week, lot to talk about. Welcome, Max. I find it weird that I haven't spoken yet. Yeah. We tried try to change it up. How many times? I don't reckon we've let Gibby do it once and apparently it was a record low. It was like the Hindenburg <laughs> flew up in the air. Not sure many that's people. factual, but I'm down. Um, no, I'm good. good I'm good. You. Short and break. So we've come. Um, I spend, I remember always hearing stories about Richmond because Richmond obviously pay a lot of Thursday, Friday nights. They go like 10 day breaks to six day break to 10 day break to six day break. We, we, we were just Sunday to Sunday. Sunday to Sunday. For years and just a normal seven day break. So um, getting used to this um, short stuff. So we've, Crammed the podcast in. We yes. managed to get it in on our lunch break. Yes, we have. And uh, as I said, a lot to talk about. So maybe we should just get straight into it. How are you, Gibby? I'm good. Good to be here. Yep. Uh, it's good to have you. You weren't at the game. I thought this might come up. Yeah. When well, those that follow you, which is not many, um, <laughs> would, would have seen where you were. But I'm um, on private, actually. I must admit, I couldn't believe <laughs> when I... when. So this, I had about five people, five people tell me this. Um, Gibbo didn't come up to the game. Yep. Gibby. Gibby had better things to do, and what, what, what was it? Where was it? Was he? A Delta, look, I, there's, uh, yeah, there's only one real way to say it. He went to a Delta Goodrum concert. Okay, great night. To be fair, uh, she's, far she's, out. It would want to have been. She's a beautiful voice. Yeah. Born to try goes down as an all-time classic. Oh yeah, closed the concert with it. I went for the high note. Uh, didn't hit it. I was with my sister. <laughs> went went hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, what well, you were so, singing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Big Delta fan. Big Delta fan. Where was it? Rod Laver Arena. Didn't quite pack it out, unfortunately. Oh, Delta. Yeah. Just lost it. So I was, yeah, very COVID safe. There was not many. No, you weren't, because I've seen many a photo of Gibby in the flesh, which was a segment we tried to get off the ground last week, and it just you poured rocket fuel over it and just set it on fire. So West Coast have lost 14 players due to COVID. St Kilda had Dougal Howard. You made um, jokes about it last Freeman week. Fremantle had David Money. I'm making jokes. And Gibby's out there mixing it with 30,000 people. <laughs> and getting I'm Gibby in the flesh photo, photos with people. <laughs> I'm telling you, Rod Laver Saturday night was the safest place to be. Okay. Oh, well. Okay, how would so it was good? It was great. And to be fair, I booked this in 2020. It's been pushed back twice due to COVID. So I didn't pick the date. I didn't intend for it to clash. But if I had my time again, I would have done the same thing. So um, there it is. Gibby in the flesh with Delta Goodrum at the concert. At the concert. Yeah, right. So that will go up on the socials. Um, but... Do you enjoy um, do yourself? You know the person who said that? Is that know. my sister? Just follows. We both follow Mitch Hannon. No, no, there's, there's Ebony Gibson. That's my oh. sister. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> no, we could have done a little bit more digging there. No, no. <laughs> Surely when you see the last name's Gibson, there's red flags. I just saw Delta Goodrum and, you know, we miss you, Gibbo. So no. do you, did you watch the game? Like, do you know what happened? <laughs> I actually, to be honest, I haven't watched. I watched the first quarter between Shepherd and Delta. Yep. There's a little 30-minute interval there. Yep. Um, it's all my to do. Who's the first one? Shepherd. Shepherd. They're a rock band, I think. Yeah, the brother-sister Oh, they're not band. a rock band. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I haven't watched the rest of the game yet. It is on my to-do list, but... So in hindsight, was it worth, worth it? Work-life balance. It was absolutely worth it. I'd do it again. There you that's go. Good. Nice to see your commitment to the cause. Is there um, another concert this year we should be aware about? No, nah, that's all at the moment. Yeah, or just any other thing that could pop up. <laughs> I plan to be at all, all the other games. Nah, well, as long as it's on your... No, nah, Gus and ticket. Gorney promote work-life balance. Yep. Oh, well, you took full advantage of our paid paternal leave scheme. <laughs> and we encourage, you know, Gibbo, if you're next, I don't know, probably looking around the room, it probably is you who's next, Gibby. So that's right. open to everyone. Let's we talk, like work-life balance. Let's talk Gold Coast off sure. the top. Uh, oh, well, it's not off the top anymore. Been Give going me an for insight. About five minutes. Yeah. What was it like? Uh, Surprisingly, we stayed in surfers, and for those Gold Coastians and people that have been to Gold Coast, Gold Coastians, surfers is an interesting place to stay at. So like you normally stay in Broadie. Is there COVID around there? Apparently, It'd be packed, wouldn't it? Yeah, apparently there's a bit of COVID in around mm. there. To be fair, there's COVID everywhere at the moment. True. Um, but yeah, so we stayed in surfers. Clary, who cannot Clary, yeah, yeah, if yeah. Clary gets situated in a room next to an elevator. He requests a change of room because he thinks the noise of the beeping when people are pressing buttons and people talk when they're outside lifts. So he struggles to sleep. So Clary requ- uh, was re- requested, requested to be away from the lift, but then he was by a window in surfers on yeah. the on the nightclub side. Friday and Saturday night. Friday and Saturday night. So I think Clayton slept. It was a bit um, going on. It was good though. Beach was there. Yeah, so. Beach was there. Um, and we were able to get the win, which is the only thing that's important on interstate trips. Look, I... Um I reckon Gold Coast will win a lot of games this year. So it was a good one to get up and um, take out of the way early. Yep. I suspect they'll build some momentum and be pretty good towards the end of the year. So happy to knock that one out of the way. And now we look forward to Essendon Friday night. Friday night lights. First Friday night game. 
Uh, in a while, or did we play one of the finals on Friday night? Maybe one of the finals or a Friday night. The Brisbane game. Yeah, let's say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, that's exciting against a Melbourne team um, that should bring a big crowd. Uh, our home game, I believe, um, which is which is good. I know Wednesday night might have got a few people on the on the hop, um, seeing as though it's a work night. In so fact, you I did see a few people out afterwards that were friends, and they said this is going to be a big effort to get to work tomorrow. So are you over under for our round one? I reckon over. Total. You're going overs. Oh, there would have been... Oh, no, because Bombers fans are still very... I've, no team is out of it at zero. I mean, GWS made finals at zero and three. Um, so Bombers fans will still be up and about. And they were pretty good against Brisbane. Yeah. They'll be, and first they were really good against Brisbane, to be honest. I think uh, our opposition coach, Sammy Radford, um, he runs with this term called predicted score, which is champion data, which I'm sure it's not Sammy Radford's term. but Can't imagine it is. Um, but he said Essendon won on predicted score. For those people that are interested in that Essendon Brisbane game, Essendon won on predicted score. Well, there you go. There you go. No, so I'm sure we'll um we won't take them lightly. I don't know if that's what you're insinuating, but yep. is that enough about serious about. footy chat? Just about. You got anything, anything else? You got anything from the game or? I've not from, no. <laughs> not from your game. Yeah, didn't see it. <laughs> Dogger was good. Dogger, was, that's good to know. Bowie, rising star. Yeah. So he's 34, career high, nine games. Two Rising Star nominations, a premiership, and his mum finally got to watch him play. Nine wins. Nine wins. And his mum made the trip up. Apparently, so his dad is friends with Plugger, and Plugger was in GA. Wow. How'd I go? Plugger was there. Plugger's lost a bit of weight. You wouldn't know it was him. Yeah, he used to be an absolute bust. It's probably the right ground to go to to stay incognito. Yeah, sure. Is there much of a crowd? Uh, I actually didn't look up at the scoreboard when the crowd... No, neither. I missed the, that one. A lot of Melbourne people, yeah, which is great. Yeah, Melbourne contingent. Um, I'm guessing a few seeing, people made We love them. saying that. Yeah, we love saying that. Um, I'm guessing a few people made the flight up. Um, fun fact about Bowie is... Ooh, I'm excited. In the ice bath post the game, I'm having a chat and I go, you'd be, <laughs> you'd be a chance for... Um, yeah, I just cursed. I don't know why. Oh, you have to bleep that yeah. one out. Yeah. Uh, you'd be a chance for Rising Star this week. And he goes, off the bat, straight away, he goes... Yeah, Dacos only had 17, Ward had 20, and uh, Rochelle only kicked one. So he's keeping track. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. He, he How went, are we going to get it there? He wants his, and he's a double nom, yeah. which is phenomenal number of Melbourne players have been double nom. His career, specifically though, is just incredible when you roll those numbers out and those statistics. Like, uh, I'm not surprised he's a double nom. Based Luke Jackson, on his double nom. Nathan, Nathan Jones, Jones, double nom. Sam Bleeds, double nom. Jordy Gisbert's double nom. Hogs? No, he no, won, he won nah, it. He won yeah. it. And he was injured his whole first year, so doubtful on Hogs. Bowie's got to be close to favourite to win. I know there, there are some good young kids. Jeez, but you've gone early on that. Two nah, boys kicked a, five last week. Yeah, but he, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've, you've had a couple of misses. <laughs> I missed don't the think, entire game, and um, that's a bad. <laughs> I don't think that's kicked a five. miss at all. You, you don't think Bowie's a chance to win this? Oh, sorry. You've so he's had, a career, he's had a career high 34. Yeah. What's his next second best? Good play. Uh, I don't know. Would, would we take a rough guess but and say 21 or something? I'll say 21. So he's had a game out of the hat. Okay, you can, I you love can him. slam your teammate. No, I reckon he's, I'm I reckon he's great. I'm having him, we're having him on next next week and we'll, and we'll ask him this question because he'll know exactly where he sits in the mm. rising star yeah. picking order. He'll be able to tell you the numbers, what Dacos has had. Um, my humble opinion is we have a very, very good, young, talented player. But I know these rising star people. They yeah, look for they the like draft the, picks. They like the sexy story. They like line, the sexy they? story. Well, that's a they sexy story. Bowser's got a, you know... A storyline there. Yeah, but he's a second-year player. Yeah, they don't like him as a second-year player. Players. I don't know. A bit of experience. Only seven games from last year. But They want to give it to Dacos. They do. They <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, uh, very good game by Bowie. Um, anything else on the, on the news front? Well, injuries. Essendon actually merit. Syndesmosis. He's had surgery, so he'll miss this week. And There's a few of them going around. Yeah. It's well, Walsh only, it's Walsh only come back in three or something, didn't he? Yeah, he came back pretty quick. So... Yeah. Because they said he'd missed the first four, only missed round one. Yep. Um, Nick Cox also a chance to miss with an ankle for them. Lever and Hibbard will miss for us. Mm. A bit more time. I, I guess when you've got blokes coming in, doing a good job, you don't have to rush them back too quickly. So um, that's the injury space for us at the moment. Do you want me to pick the team? Yeah, go for it. I'm going no change. <laughs> oh, no, how are you? Bold. Fine. You're good? Yep. Um, can we talk about the no helmet? Uh, yeah, sure. You didn't wear it. It was just. Um, did you get a, did you get a touch without it? No, I can't. I don't think I did. I might have been in a couple of contests. Hey, Gibby, did you get a touch without it? <laughs> don't ask me. Don't ask Steph. He was at his dad's 60th. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're one out here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
as Sarah will know, I um, got split in half. I got th- spun around in the 360 sort of... But con- no head contact. No head contact, sweet. And yeah. then came off and then Riv needed a spell. And I sort of was just in my own little realm just trying to get myself together and said stuff and I'll, I'll be right, I'll go out. Sort of got myself up, ran out onto the ground and I had just forgot that my helmet... Because it was so hot that my helmet lives in the ice bin for those games and I just ran out without it. It's weird with the back seven. If someone goes down the back seven... Only someone who's a backman can come on for him, even if it's an emergency. They're like, yeah. no, no, we had to bring Gus back on. Like, I was sitting on the bench, and so was like Sparks or someone. Yeah. And they're like, no, they can't. We can't play Sparks or Gorney there. Like, but if it's a middle or a forward, you just chuck anyone on just quickly. Yeah. So the men's department yeah, does men's it. Department. Uh, does it properly, but um, no, I got back out and played the game and a bit I, sore, but I'll be sweet. Can I ask the backstory behind the men's department? Yeah, Steve May said something about it pretty early on. Um, so obviously, I. Well, maybe not as obvious. I've been training and working with my beloved wingers, the wingers club. Yep. Are you for still the pre-season? In that? Uh, it's a, a don't. If I would love to get Lingers on to talk it out, I suspect he probably wouldn't come. But yeah. there's a lot of moving parts. So we there. had that really long discussion in podcast one mm. about who's actually in the wingers club, and you've you've taken out like yeah, James yeah. Jordan, James Harms, and now yep. and now I'm probably on the outer. Yeah, but is now James Jordan back in? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I'm in trouble, I think. Uh, I don't know. Lingus doesn't talk to me much anymore. Yeah. I have moved into... So the Wingers Club equivalent, down back to the men's department, run by Steve May. And, uh, is um, it, but is every defender in that? Yeah. Okay, so it's not as... Not exclusive. as selective, yeah. Well, I mean, it, yeah. I get what you're saying. It's yeah. um, I'm, I'm officially in, though, so that's good. Yeah, that's good. And my stripes. Uh, but no, I'm liking it back there. It's good. Um, just randomly, I, I thought of this word. I've been saying recluse instead of recluse. Like Vaucluse, the Sydney suburb. Yep. Instead of saying like, um, uh, what's a good like? I'm living like a recluse down in Blake Eric. You're living like a Vaucluse. How many people Vaucluse did you say that to? At least fifty. <laughs> 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 I need you, I need you by my side at all times. Yeah, you really do. Um, um, fun fact. I've got uh, you go, and then I've also got a fun fact, which I'm, should be really fun. I'm playing golf tomorrow. With Saws? No. With who? I'm playing at Cathedral. Oh, wow. Yeah. Who with? How the hell did you get that? No, I, don't, uh, I can't uh, talk about the connections that I have, um, but there is a chopper ride out. Oh, wow. Yeah, chopper ride out. So you've gone to the top, have you? Yeah. Evo. And I've got a score under 100. Yeah, I'm I working think. at... Uh, this, is, this is less You'll of a work experience fact. tomorrow. This is cool. At, Evans, at Evo's firm. So I, I should be on the chopper with you. Oh, come. Nah, I'm working. Um, yeah, and the second golf story is uh, we have a golf group. Mm-hmm. We have a golf WhatsApp. It'd be about... 15 people in there. Do you play golf? Not well. Um, there'd be about 15 to 20 of us in there. And the two probably worst, minus Sam Wiedemann, but the two worst are myself and Source. Yeah, you... You have to have a handicap to get in. Yeah. And I'm 20 and Source is 15. Something like that. Maybe... I reckon Source could be 14. But Weeds would be like a 23. So Weeds would be worse, but... I don't think Weeds has a handicap at the moment. I think no. you let it relapse. But... Source and I, uh, we're going back and forward, going at each other pretty hard. So you, for context, laughed at him. So I was adding people into the group yeah. and I added Source. And I laughed at him. And you that replied to that with just that five lines of consecutive yeah. laughing. So he's challenged me to a game. And I've taken, like, of course I'm going to take it, but I'm a bit insulted that he thinks he's going to win. Yeah. So today I called him anything but his first or last name today. So I called him Champ, Ledge, the mind games. Sport, Squirt, uh, Mate. Um, lad, big superstar. boy, big boy, yeah, nice. Um, superstar, golf's all about muscles. Head. Muscles so is my favourite. You're already in there, so I'm way in his head. Um, he's he has said he will not play golf for six months if he loses. Whoa, and, whoa, then whoa. I, and then I said I have to give up something as well. Oh well, that's what Saw said. Well, you have to give up something. I said well, I'm not going to give up golf. He goes, well, what else do you love? And I said, oh, I won't play indoor hockey for six months because I love indoor hockey. I can't mm. imagine that's a parallel. <laughs> You've seen me play indoor hockey Actually, all the time. When I think about it. Yeah, wow, well, you are, a bi- and that would hurt you as well. Oh yeah, that would hurt yeah, me. I'm yeah, a big no indoor, indoor hockey, hockey man. All right, that's funny. Well, when's the game? Uh, this the day off next week. Okay, which I'll is be, exciting. I'll be following that. Uh, yep. My fun fact. So obviously, I'm the social media manager, and I am you know, across the uh, wild soon, which is sort of your everything manager. Yeah. Um. Well, except for sponsorship, that's yep. Fargs. Um, yeah, sorry. Give me the flash, wild soon. They've sort of taken off. And what's got lost in the hubbub is the fact that we are closing in on 10,000 followers. The K, the... Wow. Um, what are the... That is a, that's about 9,300 more than you have on TikTok. <laughs> oh, you don't have a TikTok. Yeah, I was going for them yesterday. It's quite fun. For a Give them a little plug, the TikTok. 
I don't really post, so I don't need to. Ben Gibson, 24, is it? Uh, it would be 18. If 18. Number Why's that? But, uh, you used to like Brad Green. Are you a Melbourne supporter? I still like Brad Green. Are you a Melbourne supporter? Yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. Go Come true. And he didn't come to the game. Um, 9,691 <laughs> followers. So. Well, I'm my, presuming the people listening aren't that's are already following. Uh, yeah, but we, I did this with Barbie Onions back when that was a thing. Yeah. Like I said, if you tag a friend and they whatever, then I'll give you a signed onion. And yeah. so. To what can we give them? Well, what's the, we gave out Sporting, sporting Globe, Globe voucher. voucher. Yeah. There's a 200 well, we don't have, we don't have 300 of them. You could no, just no, 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 no. So, we, so 10, I, I put a photo oh, okay. up and then would say, comment and the winner gets follow if this gets to, if we get 10,000 followers yeah. when we get there. Because we will get there. We've been tracking up. What's this space called? Is this marketing? Yeah, so you, mean, yeah. you head so of marketing you get well? someone to comment and tag a friend. Yep. If their friend then follows, then they both go in the draw to win the voucher. And when we get to get 10K, 10K 000, someone wins the voucher. And when we get to 10K, then we'll go through and pick one at random and yep. then they will get the Sporting Globe voucher. Two hundred dollars okay. worth winning. Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. That's a couple of feeds and a, and a quaddy, isn't it? <laughs> so there's that. I'm excited for that though. That's um when you what? get the K, you know you're serious. There's two things: the blue yeah. tick I and might, the K. I might take Goody to the sporting club. Oh, <laughs> one out, me and him, a couple of pots. <laughs> um, so that's happening. Okay, so that's happening. We want to get to ten K. We're, we're going to join the K club soon. And you could repost it for once in your goddamn life. I see you a bit too. Cool Have you for reposted the, anything? I Gus sometimes morning? do. No, you don't. I think I do more than you. It's in, is, is, is it in your bio? Yes. Is it in your bio? No. Would you like me to add it? <laughs> no, no, no. It's fine. I would suspect How many followers know. do you have? I'm on private on Instagram. Are you? So I'm not going to add much. Okay. I'll just check. That's upsetting. Because I went Sorry. at it then. Yeah, I am on the... I have put it in my bio. Okay, it's in my bio. It. Yeah, it's in my bio. It it's okay. down the bottom though. Yeah, okay. Mine's... Yeah, there's a few things above it. It's above Barbie Onions in mine. So well, Barbie Onions is dead. Yeah, it is. Rest in peace, Barbie Onions. Sam Pang ruined it. <laughs> Son of a... I um, can't say that. Uh, COVID's coming back. Well, you made a joke about it the yeah. other week and I said probably not the right time nor place and you seemed to think that it was all done with. Yeah. And here well, we I, are. I never said all done with it. I just thought it was, was funny. an opportune time to make a joke about it. Sure. And here we are. We've actually had a couple few of support staff. staff. Yeah. yeah, a couple of support staff. Um, we might be down to my therapist today. Which is no players upset. though. No, no, we, no, we have 45. Oh, sorry. No I players thought you were saying we have no players available. Um, don't know why I thought that <laughs> chain of thought. Uh, we have 45 players available. Yeah, um, we all, do. All players have managed no players to avoid have got it, it yeah, which thank is good. You. No coaches either so far. Um, but I just thought I'd mention that. There is, everyone's limited to West Coast, but there was three Frio players. There was a, a couple of Saints players, Carlton players. Um, yeah. So it is lurking around. And look, we knew this was, the, the AFL said the whole time that we'd just be powering through it. Yep. So there's no one surprised. What I'm interested though, and what I've, I would flag now for all the keen Melbourne supporters listening, is that our probably first cab off the... Um, COVID rank, yep. if someone goes down, is our runner, Reese Conker. Yep. And I'm excited. I'd, I'd, um, if It would be great to see him dust the boots off and have another go. But um, outside of that, I'd, do you know who else we've got? Uh, Zarakis, we spoke yeah. about this. Um, my favourite's Jimmy Munro. He's a Casey Storm. Yeah, you'd love to see that. Yeah. He'd get 10 weeks. He'd get 10 weeks <laughs> to spend, but it'd be, a, it'd be a joy to play with. Um, last little thing, any feedback from Sticks? About nah, he got covid but any feedback? Did Didn't he watch listen. the vision? He didn't nah. listen. Was hit with the yeah, COVID. Right. Yeah, his boy, well, you can't listen to a podcast <laughs> nah. and you got COVID. No, nah, well, he's a bit sick, mate. Well, people get sick when they get... So it's a, it's, you know, it's a disease of, that he, he got and got sick. Um, we're keeping our guests waiting. Um, sure. We've got Eden Zanker but before a, a massive prelim, which is exciting. Yep. I just want to finish on this story. My ruck coach is Greg Stafford, uh, also the forwards coach, also general handyman of Casey Fields, also just all-round great bloke. Sure. And apparently his camp down in his house was the reason why I won a flag. So he is literally, Greg Stafford's up here. Yep. He, um, we do this thing before a game where we go out for a few marks, talk about a little bit of ruck work. We Sorry, for those listening, up here, he put his hand up high. Yep. Um, if you're just listening to the actual podcast version, yep. we, th- we, th- we rate him highly. Yeah, and now you've, uh, this is great radio because you've thrown my chain of thought. Um, so you so we spend half an hour out on the ground before a game and he always says, this half an hour is your half an hour. Mm. And then we saw... Um, I think it was Ooze talking to another Gold Coast coach. It might have been James Frawley. He's a Gold Coast coach. And he was, they were chatting away. And I said, geez, imagine if you did that and stitched me up and went and talked to someone else like in the half, half an hour like you saw a coach in you. And he goes, I hate it. Hate it with a passion when coaches talk to other coaches pre-game. What, like we're about to go do battle against yeah. each other? I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't really like it either, stuff. I'm not over here nor there, but I don't really like it. It was pretty against And it. then 10 minutes into our thing, yeah. Wayne Campbell, who must be the footy boss at Gold Coast, walks out 
and he yells out, Staff, and I'm kicking a ball with Staff. Staff misses the ball and goes, Wayne, how are you? And goes over and shakes his hand, and he's there for 10 minutes. The, the, uh, that's he goes, ironic, Wayne it? Campbell was his skipper, and he said, it's a disappointing that my skipper happened to be the one that walked out at that time. No, nah, I think once you've gone pretty hard with the, <laughs> makes me sick to see that, you've just got to give him the cold shoulder. You'd understand later if they were that close. Yeah, so I thought the podcast world would enjoy that story. You were a Richmond supporter with Staff around whilst you were he was he wasn't my favorite person because he wasn't a ruck and he wasn't a full forward he was what i am now that mediocre tall Did you get forward. Brad Alton? Um, mediocre. bit of oddens at, um yeah a little bit of oddens oddens left for stafford to come in sure um richmond had a a, a a lot of rucks trent noble troy simmons um adam patterson angus graham i'm sure this is content that everyone wants to hear uh, but staff was one of my favorite players yeah there you go um we'll come back with zanks now, Gus, we all know the team at Zurich Insurance are proud sponsors of the Gus and Gorney podcast. Yes, absolutely. Huge supporters of the pod. I think they were our first sponsor and certainly our first platinum partner, which they is a platinum. huge result. Yes, and they've also been on board as a co-principal partner of the club since 2018 and have been protecting Australia for over 100 years. That's right. They provide insurance for individuals and families, plus businesses large and small. Now, Gussie, we know you're a big fan of protection, rocking your helmet at every chance you get, so this is very on brand for you. You're absolutely right. To see how Zurich can support you, head to zurich.com.au or contact your financial advisor or broker. Uh, Welcome back. Um, Very exciting. We have AFLW royalty. Royalty. Royalty in the the room, or technically not in the room, because like we said, we've got a couple of support staff that have gone down and... uh, Zanks has got something a little bit more important. Yeah, she's in the track. There's no, there's no other way to describe this, really. Yeah. Uh, she's in a tractor. Aiden, thank you for coming on. Thank you for putting aside the harvest, and thank you for um, coming in and having a chat to the Gus and Gorney podcast in probably what's the biggest week of your football career, if we're being honest. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So, um, yeah, massive week for us, um, as you guys are probably aware of. Uh Bit of a game at the G, a bit of a prelim. What are your yeah. thoughts around that? I, I mean, I'd, I can give you some tips about prelims. Well, we've had good and bad Thanks. prelims, so ease um, yeah. up on the five goal stuff. <laughs> One prelim I actually never rocked up to. Um, <laughs> no, look, it's, it's obviously exciting. Uh, I would have loved anything in the world to be able to play an MCG prelim. Still haven't. I've played two Optus Oval uh, prelims, prelim yeah. finals. Um, beggars can't be choosers. I'm more than happy to play in a prelim final. Um, but it would have been great. Uh, is it a big week in your life because it's harvest season as well or is harvest season done? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, no, no, not harvest season here. At the- okay. Gorney okay. still quite doesn't get it. He still qu- I guess in comparison to a harvest for us is a solid eight weeks of Friday nights. But now that Mooney Valley, um, they're all done. Yeah. So it sort of gets transferred here. So it's, it's similar to a harvest. Like it's a big time of the year for us. Yeah, the track's a good aid. Good aid at the MCG. Just to provide context to our listeners, Eden Zanka currently working at Cranbourne Racetrack. She's out on the track. And also, that's why we're asking questions related yeah. to her. To provide some context to Eden, Gorney um, made a goose of himself in front of um, Big Boy McAvoy by you know, saying that he knew what the harvest was and then absolutely having no idea. So there's a little bit going on here, but. I still don't. I still don't really know what time and what and how to use it in what context that word. Yeah, well, you're not a farmer. I don't think it's going to ever come up really unless you force it in there. No, but what's uh, the what's the what's the track rating? Are we at a good four? Um, I reckon would be at a. Well, I'm putting on ten mil at the moment, so I reckon after today it'll be probably soft five. Yeah. Um, but I don't think we're getting any uh rain for a couple days, so I reckon it'll be a good four, good three come race day. Yeah, it feels like, feels like a good three to me. <laughs> yeah, I, we'll, we'll put it as a good three. Let's leave yeah. it at that. What would you say, what would you say Casey Fields compared to <laughs> MCG? What are we talking? Are they both in the goods or? I'll tell you what, and you, you would have just been out there today and you're yep. still there. How yep. good is Casey Fields looking at the moment? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great one. It's looking it's slick. It's an amazing deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is this, your, is this your competitor out here though, This the guy who does this, this oval? Do you give him kids? Nah. No, nah, I don't give him any tips. No, nah, I don't know. I haven't actually come across him yet. So <laughs> um, it's probably poor form on the turf curator's behalf. But um, no, nah, uh, good, good three out of Casey too. It's, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful little oval. And I think we're very privileged to have that facility all to ourselves. Last, last question, last question regarding, regarding turf. Um, what's your backyard like? My backyard? Um, I don't have one. Oh, do you have a front yard? What about at Natya? Natcha? 
Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice kikuyu surface out there. Oh, of course so, it is. Um, the grass back home is nice, but in my apartment in Chadston, uh, yeah, it's just solid concrete, unfortunately. <laughs> Fair enough, too. Not a heap of uh, turf out there at Chadston. Nah, nah, there isn't. Concrete jungle. Gus touched on you're from Natcha, which is... Natcha. There's a... According to the 2016 census, 38 people there. How would you go growing up, Edo? With well, 37 now, Eden's in Jetson. Yeah, Not a lot of people out. around. <laughs> the, the lifestyle's a bit different there to the big world of playing on the MCG. Yeah, uh, 30, what did you say? 36 or 37 is probably pushing the boundaries a little bit wow. in terms of how many people are in that chart. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, limit, I'd probably limit it down to about eight. Wow. Eight? Wow. <laughs> There's not many. And we're probably all related. So. Um, okay. That's a look. Yep. Interesting. How, how does that compare to the MCG? I honestly, I'm very excited to run out on the G and have more than half the people there be uh, D supporters. So um, I think it's going to be an electric feeling and hopefully we can put on a bit of a show uh, for our prelim and get the job done and um, look towards a, a bigger game in the next week. All right. Let's talk footy then. Uh, well, we were just talking footy. Yeah, no, we're talking about the MCG spectacle. Sure. Now we're talking. We're talking. Eden, according to what I've been reading, may or may not be playing. Thanks. How are you, how are you feeling? Is it your quad? Yes. Yeah. It's sort of. Yeah. There's been. A, I think people are just making something out of nothing. Really. Love that. Well, you didn't finish the game. That's, I mean, yeah, you put your superstars on ice, though, <laughs> don't you? You don't risk it. I mean, you're, you're, you're through to the prelim. What are you doing? <laughs> I have to save myself. Nah, it's this bit of an issue, sort of ripple affected off from my ankle. Uh, just my leg probably overcompensating a little bit, and then it's sort of gone all the way up into my quad. But that certainly doesn't rule me out for Saturday. So. Uh, I've seen that before. Too many kicks. I'll be, I'll be fine. Okay, that's, that's, that's good. And let's talk about the opponent. Uh, we've worked out... After a long wait, that is. Yeah, the uh, Gus and Gorney science department spent a lot of time trying to figure out what was actually going on, and we've decided that it's Saturday. It's twilight. Saturday. No, during the day, <laughs> twelve forty. But Understood. we got Brisbane. <laughs> Tell us about Brisbane. What sort of? Um, I, I see one of the girls won the coaches association award, which is a great award to win, Zank. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Emily Bates. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Benny. But yeah, she correct. won that. Great, great little player. So um, yeah, well deserved well deserving of that award but um yeah brizzy high pressure good contest the team um yeah aggressive aggressive wings so um yeah it'll be a really really hot contest but i feel like if we can uh, get our hunt and our um, supportive layer right we should have no dramas in um yeah bringing a really good contest to them so um and just taking on their pressure as well so we did think get- we'll, uh, we'll be right we did get the win over them, Edo, earlier in the year, but they were playing their third game in nine days. So they were pretty stretched to that point. Probably wasn't a true reflection of where they're at. Are you expecting a bit more of a challenge this time around, Edo? Um, yeah, like, I think finals just brings a whole different feeling and level of competitiveness. So I feel like we, we can't really base, you know, we, we know Bruce is going to bring a lot of pressure and they're really good at the contest, but I feel like we can't really go off the games that we've had in the home and away season. Because, yeah, as you'd know, Maxi and, and Gus here, that the, the, there's just a different feeling in finals altogether. It's certainly not like a home and away home and away season. So, um, yeah, we, we know they're going to bring a fair bit of pressure and, and whatnot. But, um, yeah, we, we're sort of not thinking about the wins that we've had against them. We're just looking at, you know, this week and um, the opportunities that we can have against the Lions. Yeah, we, we do know. Yeah, we know. We know. We know now. We know now. We, we, yeah. we do know now. Um, I want to talk about a little bit about you, the player. Um, uh, 2017 drafted, pick six, uh, came into uh, the lineup 2018, but you were originally a forward slash ruck. Um, which Your I, role now. Yeah, which is my role now. <laughs> uh, now Jacko's the number one ruck, forward slash ruck. Um, and now randomly you're an... You're not randomly. You probably uh, deserve it, but you're you're an inside mid. So I feel like there's still a chance to me to be an inside no, mid. No, but this is not about no me. It's about hope. Eden. <laughs> now, Eden, I did see something early on in your career where you were in the gym a relentless amount of times, running into the boys, and that you were the only player. Sense in English. The only player that I was seeing constantly in the gym, and I said, "We got a we got something here. She she is working 
uh, tirelessly to be able to create ourselves into being the best player. Now, all of a sudden, we have an unbelievable 190 centimetre tall forward slash ruck slash inside mid. Tell us about the journey. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, drafted in 2017. Uh, oh, well, I, that's where I started my sort of under-18s career. And um, I guess if we go a long way back, I was a bit of a netballer, um, three years netball. And then, yeah, it just wasn't really doing anything for me anymore. And I didn't feel like I was going anywhere. And, you know, I, I loved being back home, but I felt like I had a bit more of an opportunity in a different sport. So that's, yeah, probably where I've, where my love for footy came out. And, yeah, I played a bit of under-18s and just, you know, being back home in, in nature, there, there isn't too much happening out there. So I've had to travel two and a half hours never, nearly every weekend to, to play footy. So Do um, um, do, do Natcha have an AFLW team? No, absolutely no. not. Oh, They've got good no one, good footy team. I was just checking. Good one, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, the most we've got there is just to see uh, like a fire shed and that's it. That's where uh, sure. everything oh, you'll happens. Safe, you'll and, safe from the fire. <laughs> yeah. We'll be right when there's a fire. But, um, yeah, from there I sort of just got picked up through the under-18s championships for Big Country and, um, yeah, got in an all-Australian side in the under-18s and, yep. yeah, got yeah. drafted from there. But, yeah, I did start off as a bit of a forward, but it's good to have that versatility around the ground and being able to have a bit more of an impact inside mid and um, use that all that gym work to get that ball inside deep 50. Um, yeah, I think it's become a real strength of mine. So, um, no, it's been a good journey so far. It actually sounds like you're our equivalent of Dogger, that big yep. forward. If Dogger plays small bursts randomly, maybe you're a bit more of an inside mid than he is, but that's a fair compa- player comparison for um, for him to stack up next to you. He must be, he, he'd be really happy to hear that. No, I, I'll, I am happy to hear that, but I, I, I'm <laughs> sure I could take a few tips off Dogger as well. No, please, please, for the love of God, do not listen to a word that comes out of his Don't mouth. Communicate. Do not communicate with Dogger's him. Dogger's being compared. Uh, <clears throat> we got a mutual staff member in David Regan. Not anymore. He's 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 just in our program. But David Regan compared Dogger to Eliza McNamara. Is that is that sound about right? Um, that's a um, that's a pretty strange comparison, but um, we all know David Regan and the strange things that he comes up yeah, with. Yeah, he's so also strange. I, 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 feel, <laughs> I feel like we'll just let it roll for now to keep him happy, but at yep. the end of the day, there's no comparison there whatsoever. All right. Oh, well, you've you've knocked this interview out of the park. We're, Hopefully, yeah. The prelim goes there. as well as this. This was um, and all whilst driving the tractor as well. So all those people at home, you shouldn't podcast and drive unless you eat and drink. In which case, do whatever the goddamn hell you want. So thanks very much for thanks, coming Aiden. on. Good luck this week. Thanks, guys. That was Zanks, and boy, uh, based on that interview, sounds pretty confident. Looks like uh, it's going to be a good game for the demons on uh, Saturday afternoon. Yeah, you asking her if it's a Twilight game it was a bit worrying. Yeah, but there was about 50 different There was, like. and it was up in the air. And actually, um, I remember you making a big mockery of me saying, I reckon it might be Casey Fields Saturday either. And you go, oh, will it? Like thinking it's the most obvious thing. And then I said, well, it's not locked in. And it wasn't. I don't. I, we have to go back on the podcast uh, of uh, what yeah, was you, a couple of weeks. You probably didn't go like, oh, was it like that? Yeah, but, maybe not. Um, but that was, uh, she was. She spoke very well as well. Yeah. We haven't thanked our sponsors, so we'll chuck that Which in. Which we really should because I was actually thinking the other night, boy, I really um, need to protect what matters most. Uh, so you can actually go, go to Zurich and get some easy life cover. Um, I just went on the website then, Zurich Easy Cover. And obviously a great friends at Sporting Club. If you see Gibby in the flesh, which are you uh, actually are scared to go to the supermarket now? Yeah, I hear? true. Like, oh, everywhere except for Delta Goodrum concerts. So. Yep. People, um, people are constantly coming up to Gibby in the flesh, which is exciting. I'm and obviously Wild Sun. Wild Sun, I got approached in the race. at, And this is where it's not – so the people in the race asked, is Wild Sun there? able to get a photo up in Gold Coast, but that is captive. Yeah, so, that's, that's still in captivity as yeah, far as I'm concerned. that's still in captivity. So you, don't, you don't go to the zoo and see a, a tiger <laughs> and say, oh, I saw a tiger in the wild. Yeah, that no. just doesn't count, so does it? We've got to see wild soon. We've got to see soon out in the wild. It has to be wild. So everyone, go to Fitzroy, get your e-scooters and your um, hybrid cars, go to Fitzroy and then get the cameras And out. you get a Sporting Globe voucher from that. So uh, thank you, Gus. Uh, we crammed this one in. Thank uh, we'll you, be back. Thank you, Gibby. Got one membership update before we go. So we had a competition oh, yeah, last week. 75% of the votes to Gus. What so, a, what, was there four people and three of them were <laughs> racials? Sure. Or? I'm guessing the numbers were too I'll give you one tip. One person who didn't, someone tweeted me saying, I'm not saying Gus because I'm not signing if he's not. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. <laughs>